This is Tom Bernanke and the number one killer in the world affecting 50% of people over the age of 45 is arteriosclerosis. That's your heart. That's your arteries. You're low on energy. You're tired. We're going over the top 15 supplements to get you feeling better and we're starting now. Make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going over my three critical and important tips. And we're gonna summarize all of this because 15 different supplements, that's crazy. You're not gonna take 15 different pills. So I'm gonna show you strategically what to do and how I would recommend it to my patients. What I really went with is strongest evidence, most evidence, and best results for the people that I've personally experienced. This is my list. Tell me if it sucks. Tell me if you have a better list. Tell me if I forgot about anything because there's millions of supplements out there and there's new studies coming out every day. But this is my top 15 list. Arteriosclerosis is a condition where the walls of the arteries become thick, stiff. This reduces blood flow to the heart, to your feet, to your hands. So I see this every day. This is why people lose their toes, their feet. This is why people have heart attacks. Now, can arteriosclerosis be reversed? Officially, it's a chronic and progressive disorder, but you can really improve your health. So while you can't cure it perfectly, the reality is you can improve your health 50, 75, or more percent. I think that's very reasonable to achieve. So however you define it, we're gonna go over the things that can make it better with the best bang for your buck. Number 16 is red yeast rice. This is a fermented rice product and it's been shown to lower cholesterol and improve arterial health. So people who eat this regularly tend to have strong arteries and it has some low cholesterol lowering effects. There's actually a lot of studies because the active ingredient monocolon A is similar to the drug lovastatin. So the active ingredient has been proven to lower LDL cholesterol, but the dosages, even though they're about 1200 to 1400, they're not really proven, but it does show reduced cholesterol. Number 15, pomegranate. So pomegranate is a fruit very rich in antioxidants. Antioxidants are like little police cars that go around your blood vessels and pick up loose electrons. They pick up oxidative damaging molecules and they can make your arteries have better prognosis long-term. Pomegranate juice is known for its antioxidant benefits, its heart health benefits, its ability to reduce LDL cholesterol, and it's been studied in the Journal of Nutrition Research. Number 14, Hawthorne. Hawthorne is a plant that may help improve blood flow and lower heart and blood pressure. So you're improving blood pressure, you're improving heart function. Hawthorne is well studied. At 160 milligrams or more in the studies, it has been shown to lower blood pressure, help with heart failure, reduce cholesterol. It has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects while lowering LDL. And this has been studied in a lot of different journals. Berberine is a compound found in several plants and may help lower cholesterol levels and reduce inflammation. Definitely a good option to take. Berberine is a herbal supplement that should be taken about 900 milligrams to about 1500. It can lower LDL cholesterol, blood pressure, and has been shown with blood glucose control to be very beneficial. L-arginine is an amino acid that may help improve arterial health by increasing the production of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide dilates the blood vessels, so more blood flow gets there. It helps relax the vessels. And several studies show that L-arginine has a beneficial effect on arterial health, heart health, your endothelial function. Those are the cells within your artery, so it makes them healthier. It makes your arteries less stiff. I love L-arginine. I take it every day for improved blood flow, so that includes cardiovascular fatigue, erectile dysfunction, wound healing, anti-inflammatory effects, but if you take too much, it can vasodilate and lower the blood pressure. So just be careful taking too much in case you get lightheaded or dizzy. Number 11, niacin. This is also known as vitamin B3. This helps lower LDL cholesterol levels and improve arterial health. Several studies are showing that niacin may have a beneficial effect on arterial health with good overall results. The vitamin B3 dosage should be 16 milligrams per day for improved cardiovascular health, lower LDL cholesterol, inflammatory effects, but watch out for those side effects. Number 10, these are kind of the more important ones. Curcumin or turmeric. This is a compound found to have anti-inflammatory properties. The great news is I'm a huge fan of this. I have a video on this below where I go over it in detail, 
all the studies, but the bottom line is it's a spice, it's completely safe, you can't overdose on it, it's good for your inflammation. Some studies show that it's as good as taking anti-inflammatories like aspirin or ibuprofen. So that's unbelievable, just for your joints, that has very big effects. And several studies are behind this. There's a lot of good proof. It's cheap, it's at every grocery store. That's one I highly recommend getting. The dosage is up to two grams per day safely in most cases, but be careful. Some people can have iron deficiency and some medication interactions as well as some stomach issues with too much, so be careful. Number nine, resveratrol. This is a big one, a lot of health books too, because resveratrol is said to provide ATP decoupling. What this basically means is it helps you burn a lot of calories. It helps with weight loss. It's found in grapes and red wine, but it's also shown to reduce inflammation and help with your blood flow. I have some links down below, but I eat it in powder form. You wanna eat like 250 milligrams a day. I make sure to include that in my daily regimen. It's not the most expensive and it has some pretty good results. The dosage is usually in the 250 milligram per day range. It's great for heart arteries, brain function, weight loss. It's found in red wine and grapes, but be careful for GI and medication interaction. Number eight, green tea. So green tea is a tea, so you can make it at night, especially in warm areas like Michigan myself. It's rich in antioxidants. And what happens is this helps protect the heart from atherosclerosis and arteriosclerosis. Studies show green tea is effective with your heart health and lowers your risk of coronary arterial disease. So there's a lot of good studies behind green tea. It's a cheap, easy one to do and put in your daily regimen. The dosage is usually two to three cups a day for weight loss or 270 to about 1200 milligrams per day of extract. This can help with heart health, cholesterol, anti-inflammation, weight loss, but too much can cause some GI issues, insomnia, and iron deficiency anemia. Number seven, garlic. Garlic has been shown to help lower blood pressure and reduce inflammation. Both of these help with arteriosclerosis. Several studies show that garlic has a beneficial effect. So the studies are there. Garlic is easy. You know, you can mix it in with your food, especially if you're cooking like a pasta or something. I always include it. So consider garlic for sure. It's also good for home remedies. So in my toenail fungus videos, foot fungus videos, garlic is a great option. And check out our skin tag video below. Check out the bottom. I link to almost all of these with my preferred places to get these. You want at least 600 milligrams to about 1.5 grams per day, but there's really not a lot of upper limit. Bad breath and some stomach issues might be the biggest downside, but it helps with heart, immune system, and inflammation. Number six, vitamin E. So vitamin E is an antioxidant that may help prevent the oxidation of LDL. So vitamin E, very important for heart health. Studies show that vitamin E has a lot of good effects in people who are supplemented with it, reduces arterial stiffness, and helps with type 2 diabetes. And the big thing is, arterial health is related to diabetes. And diabetes is insane. Something like 33% or more of all adults over 18 are pre-diabetic or worse. Check out our diabetes videos at the same time. This is very related to arterial health. These are 14 foods with the most vitamin E content. No, that does not mean you should be guzzling oil. It's just the foods that have it. Adults should take about 15 milligrams of vitamin E. It provides antioxidant, heart health, Alzheimer's disease protection. But if you take too much, it is not a water-soluble vitamin. So make sure you don't overdose, but it's generally safe. Number five, coenzyme Q10. This is one that you hear in the news quite a bit, but it's an antioxidant, very proven with heart damage. We're getting into the more important ones. Coenzyme Q is very beneficial for people with heart attacks, oxidative stress. It helps collect and corral those free radicals that can damage your arteries, your health, your heart. So definitely check out Coenzyme Q. I link some of my favorites down below, but very important for coronary artery health and artery health that can increase your energy levels. Also important type two diabetes. The best foods are organ meats, fatty fish, beef, chicken, soybean, canola oils, nuts, and seeds. Make sure you get those in. 30 to 200 milligrams per day is the recommended amount. And it can really help with energy production for heart health as an antioxidant. Toxicity is actually fairly rare, but it can cause some stomach and GI issues. So watch out for those. Number four is vitamin K2. This is a big one. 
major organizations say we are only getting about 5 to 25% of the vitamin K2 we should be getting. It's different than vitamin K1, and it's found fermented foods like natto, soy, sauerkraut, cheese, you know, foods that aren't really present in our diet these days. And it's something that really makes a big difference in our bone health and tooth health. Vitamin K2 is a form of K vitamin that plays a critical role in your body's calcium metabolism. What I think about is vitamin D helps bring calcium into your body, then vitamin K2 puts it into the right place. So your teeth, your bones, and keeps it out of your arteries. When I was a resident, I worked with a great vascular surgeon. I remember we were doing surgery and he basically made me grab on to somebody's aorta when we were in the OR. And I just remember how hard and stiff these things are, especially when you work on a cadaver compared to a healthy person. A healthy person is like a flexible garden hose. These people with advanced calcification that probably are not getting enough vitamin K2 throughout their life are thick. It's like cardboard that breaks and cracks. There's no flexibility. That's arterial sclerosis seen firsthand. So vitamin K2, very important to prevent stiffening. It works on a matrix GLA protein. I talk about all that in depth in a video. Don't skip vitamin K2. That's a very critical one. I take it every day. I have everybody in my family take it every day. Take a look at these top 20 foods. Natto, as we mentioned, is by far the number one, but also look at goose liver, chicken liver, gouda cheese, eggs, pepperoni, butter, bacon, pork, cheeses, all the stuff that recent diets would have you cut out. Modern diets that push towards veganism, is that something that's depriving us of vitamin K2? This could be an argument for the carnivore diet fanatics that are always on my channel. Now the next question is MK4 and MK7. Realistically, both are probably good and you can get low cost supplements that include both MK4 and MK7 K2 variants. Now cooking or freezing. Well, some studies do show that freezing it might damage the K2. And again, that's where the supplement can help out. Vitamin MK7 and MK4 are the important variants. And what they basically do is they take a matrix GLA protein and take the calcium out of the blood vessels and put it into the bones. I go over that in a little bit more detail in the other video. Here's why you should get vitamin K2. It's different than K1 and 50 to 90% of people these days are deficient. The dosage is 90 to 180 micrograms. And this is a fat soluble vitamin. It helps with bone health, your arteries, your heart, your teeth, and you can only get it from fermented foods or meats and combine that with vitamin D3. Number three, vitamin D. This is another one. You have to take it every day, in my opinion. In depending on the country, like Canada, 70 to 90% of people are deficient. In the US, in India, like half the populations are said to be deficient. This is very important. Very related to pretty much everything in the body, but arterial sclerosis especially. It's so easy, it's so low cost, and it's so beneficial. Stop watching this video, get yourself some vitamin D, is what I would tell my family members. It helps with inflammation, it helps control atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, because of its anti-inflammatory properties. Very well studied, very well proven. I love vitamin D. One of my favorite things, possibly the most important thing to take as a supplement overall. Vitamin D, very important. Vitamin D is so important. 50 to 90% deficient. Most people, especially during the winter, are not getting enough sunlight. So you should take five to 10,000 units per day, although that's still not proven. It's a fat soluble vitamin. You need sunlight, get it. Number two, omega-3 fatty acids. Probably not as important as vitamin D, but they make number two because they're very well studied to reduce inflammation, lower your total triglycerides, and specifically to address the risk factors of arteriosclerosis. So vitamin D, I would take overall more than this, but if you can, if you're worried about your arteriosclerosis and you can afford omega-3 fatty acids, very well studied, very helpful. The reasoning is, we take a lot of omega-6 fatty acids from our seed oils in our diet, our fried foods. And what happens is you want omega-6 and omega-3 in a one-to-one -one ratio. In America, it's basically 25 omega-6 to one omega-3. It leads to some inflammation. It can lead to arterial stiffening. Omega-3 fatty acids are very well proven. Be careful. A lot of these supplements, 
they basically contain a lot of bad fat and hardly any omega-3. If you look, it's EPA and DHA in there. And what happens is you want at least 50% of your omega-3 fatty acid pill to be actual omega-3 fatty acids. If you're getting bad fat and hardly any omega-3 fat, it doesn't matter how cheap the pill is, you're getting scammed. So my favorites are linked down below and we have videos about that as well. Omega-3s can be very important. It's important to make sure at least 50% of your supplement is EPA, DHA, because that's a big problem is a lot of them have a very small percentage and you're just getting a lot of bad fat instead of the good fat. And number one, dum, 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 magnesium. So I love magnesium. You might've even come to this channel, some of my magnesium videos, but magnesium, helps improve arterial health by relaxing blood vessels and reducing inflammation. I have a video about the big magnesium secret. I'm going to spoil it here for you. We used to get magnesium in our water. Ever since we started switching to pipes and like city water, we probably don't get enough in, the, in our food. So the society is very deficient. This leads to heart conduction defects like AFib. This leads to heart attacks lots of heart issues, lots of artery issues, magnesium extremely well proven. It's so cheap. It's so safe. I go into all the nitty gritty details in my magnesium secrets video, but it helps with chronic pain, helps with sleep, helps with depression, helps with a million things. It's part of 300 enzymes and very important and very well studied and proven in arterial sclerosis and heart health. So that's my top 15 countdown. Studies show majority of the people are deficient and it's tough to actually measure the true level. I love magnesium chloride and citrate and glycinate's pretty good. Check out our full video below. It's linked in the show notes. But wait, there's three secrets. So don't skip. I'm going to go over the treatment. So if you have arterial sclerosis, make sure to come see a podiatrist like me, especially for your feet, get checked out or your cardiologist for your heart. We work with vascular groups in our clinics. There's angioplasties, which can balloon open your vessels. There's stenting, there's bypasses. I go over all of that and how to go about in videos down below. But here's the secret treatments. Number one, the most proven thing is physical activity and lifestyle changes. It's by far the most important. And number two secret is it's not what you take but what you take out. You have to avoid horrible foods, high triglycerides, high sugar, high inflammatory foods. I go over my top 29 foods to avoid for your artery disease. Highly recommended. All that for free. We're not trying to sell you anything at all. And the big thing is you don't want to go crazy and buy 16 different supplements. I get it. With inflation now, nobody can afford this stuff. So here's what you want to do. This is the secret formula. You want to get magnesium, vitamin D3, and K2. Those are the most important and lowest cost ones. Omega-3 fatty acids, if you can afford them, are very good. Combo them for the rest. The combo is really the key. Check the show notes for our favorite heart multivitamins, and then you got to cut down on the sugar increase the strength training and your cardiovascular activity three times per week. That's what studies show is really important. More than taking any pills, more than taking any vitamins, control your diet and get help. So if that helped, check out all our artery videos, all our diabetes videos, and check out this number one drink that's simple and low cost, that's great for your artery health. And we have that link below and right here.